everyone. Man, I'm so glad that you're here and, and being a part in, in online campus. Thank you for joining in today. You know, gift giving, right? So there is this saying, and it's scripture, oh, it's scripture too, you know, it's more blessed to than to receive. And so we say, right, we always remind our kids, right, it's better and more enjoyable to do what? To give than to receive. And have you convinced your young kids that that's true? <laughs> because maybe for adults, you know, like we believe that, but come on, it's, it's hard for kids to think that, about that, right? Like I, I'll just give it away because mostly we want to, want to receive. Well, I, I want to I wanna share with you, I did some research on the various kinds of gift givers. Do you want to see it? I, I hope the answer is yes, because you're going to anyway. Okay, so uh, what kind of gift givers are there in the world today? First of all, there's the safe player gift giver. Now, the safe player gift giver is the one who gives the same gift every year. And you know who they are, don't you? Like you have five of these things, and so that's the safe player gift. Then there's the last minute gift giver. Now, if you receive a, a gift from the last minute gift giver, you are likely to get a gift card from Safeway or something because they just walk by the rack. Remember, they hadn't purchased a gift, so they just grab that gift card. So that's kind of like a last minute gift giver or else they go to their refrigerator and they pull out the ham. Okay, okay. The gadget giver. So the gadget giver, like guys, we, we kind of typically like that, right? Depending on the gadget. So gadget giver, and of course, we're to be reminded that we, Guys are careful about the gadget we buy our spouse, okay? So be careful for that. There's the complainer. Do you know about this gift giver? The complainer will remind you how long it took to find your gift and how many stores they had to drive to to actually get your gift. So that's the complainer right there. There's a sentimental gift giver. Like, and this is pretty good. So like they have something that this really means a lot to me. So I, I think this will mean a lot to you, you know, sentimental thing. And then the easy way out gift giver. All I'm going to say there is socks. And not only socks, um, but the easy way out gift giver, they'll go to Costco and they'll buy the bag of one dozen socks. And guess what happens? 12 people get socks for Christmas. Okay, that's the easy way out. And then there's the charity giver. Now, this is kind of a hard one um, because the charity giver will do this. They'll uh, donate, say, let's just say $500 to their local charity and you get a thank you card. <laughs> and nobody's going to say anything, right? It's a good thing for the charity, but you're going like, okay, all right, all right. So, all right, uh, and then there's the re-gifter, need I say more? Okay, and those of you who already have wrapped up your re-gift, go home, unwrap it, and think about something else because everyone's going to know who the re-gifter is, okay? There's the status hound giver. Now, these are the ones that bug me a lot. So the status hound giver is the person who buys their spouse a new truck for Christmas because they could. Do you hate that commercial like I do where the dude buys two trucks and they're debating the red or the black one? Have you seen that one? Oh, I like the black. No, I like the red. Oh, I just bought you. Anyway, so that's the status hound gifter. And then finally, there's the, uh, the genuine giver. The genuine. It's like this person, it's like my wife is this way. I'll just brag on her for a little bit if I can do that. She thinks through every gift. I'm going to say it again. Every gift. And then she will ask my, for my input and my advice. I'm going, yeah, 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 get two of those, okay? But she's thinking through every gift, and she has her list. And many of you are like that. You are genuine givers. I mean, you think about the person. You think about their need. You think about what they will enjoy. You, th you just put a lot of heart and soul into this gift. You're a genuine gift giver. I think you should give yourself a hand right now, right? So, anyway, because that's who you are, and on, online as well. I have two questions to ask you. Number one is this, what kind of gift giver are you? So when I went through that list, you go, oh yeah, I can relate more to, to that one than that one. Maybe it's good or whatever, but what kind of gift giver are you? Are you the one who puts a lot of thought into it? Or are you are the re-gifter or this type of thing? And then the second question is, what type of gift 
do you want to receive from the gift giver? Think about that one for a minute. We might even hold that thought kind of private because we may go like, I don't want to receive that charity card or I don't want to receive those socks. I gotta, what type of gift do you want to receive from a gift giver? Now I'll just add this. Be very, very careful with the gift that you're going to receive this Christmas. I got a nephew that I think a lot of. He works for this oil company and about four years ago. They moved him down to South America and I ain't seen him since. But he still thinks about me and Mark Rabbacher every Christmas. He sends us a nice present. This past Christmas, he sent us a live bird. A green bird about this tall. Had a little yellow top notch on his head with some red on it and a hook beat. And sent it to us live from South America. I'll tell you something. That bird was delicious. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> we had him for Christmas dinner. We fixed him with some dressing and some cranberry sauce, and sweet potato stuffing. Well, after Christmas, my nephew called. Want to know if we got the bird? I said we got him. Well, I liked him. I said he was delicious. <laughs> He said, you don't mean you eat that bird? I said, well, of course we did. Well, my nephew got all upset and just pitched a fit. He said, I paid a fortune for that bird. He said, that thing's worth a fortune. He said, that bird could speak two different languages. I said, well, he should have said something. Careful with the gift that, that you receive from one of these gift, gift givers. I want to suggest to you that I think there's another gift that is given that, um, that we sometimes receive, and that's the gift of trust, the gift of trust. Here's what that looks like. So um, before Jen asked me to marry her, I'm sure she told some of her close friends, right? Or maybe it was the other way around now that I think about it. Um, you know, you just trusted somebody with this piece of information that you weren't going to share with a lot of different people. And it, it was a gift. I mean, you were brought into this place, you know, of trust and safety because they knew this kind of secret would be really, really secure with you. So it, it was really a gift. Or gender reveal party, which I love. I love these things. So gender reveal party. So um, before the masses knew you were having a girl or a boy, you shared with somebody privately, look, th these others don't know, but I just want to tell you. And that moment, you felt pretty good, didn't you? Because you were brought into that place of trust, um, that place they knew that their little secret was secure, and that, that was a gift. That was a gift to you. Well, I want to take you to Luke chapter 2, because I think that's what happened um, on that day in the fields with the shepherd. There was something given to them by way of an announcement, and maybe you've read the Christmas story, this part of the Christmas story. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the, Lord, and the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a, with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying. And this will be a sign. Here we go. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those whom he is pleased. And when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us or revealed to us or just told us. Just think about it for a moment. Put yourself into that scene for just a second. Here were the angels or here were the shepherds and the angels showed up and shared with them about the Savior that had been born. And their response was, let's go. Let's go see. Now, I have to admit to you this morning as I was kind of 
reading through this passage again, I, I thought to myself, I wonder what they did with their flock. I don't know. Bible really doesn't tell us, right? Did they lead the flock? Did they take it with them? We don't re really know. But we do know that at that announcement, they left to see the Christ child. It's debated, really, um, the status of shepherds during the time of Jesus. Some say they were highly regarded. Others say they, they weren't at all, in fact. Others say they were the lowest rung during this time on the ladder. Randy Alcorn, in his understanding, says, no, shepherds, shepherds were not trusted. I mean, they're, you know, even their word in court could not be trusted. They, they just weren't viewed very highly. They were like tax collectors or what he calls, um, you know, um, they would shovel up the dung, you know, the, they'd be the person in the parade, right? Um, shoveling up the poop from the horses and everything like that. I mean, that's, that's what stat, their status was. Um, the other authors is like, they, 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 they Nobody would even stop to help. They was encouraged, don't, don't help the shepherd if he's in need. Uh, just let him be. You know, he just didn't, didn't mean a lot. And if all that is true, it has really caused me to stop and think for just a moment about the shepherd. And I kind of wonder if in that moment they, they thought, why, why us? Why me? Why did we just hear this? This morning, as I, as I thought about that and began to think about the shepherds on that day, I, I thought about Jesus during his life on earth, how he would reach out and he would touch people that were unclean. I mean, he would reach out and, and touch them. Nobody else would, but Jesus did. In that moment, I think he not even brought physical healing, but he brought emotional healing to the leper. Or how about the, the woman at the well, the Samaritan who he reached out to? How about the woman who was caught in adultery? How about the tax collectors? And then he would go have dinner with them. I mean, it just causes me to kind of step back and go like, why me? Why us? Have you ever thought about that? You see, there's only one place on our list of gift givers that this gift fits. And this number 10, the genuine gift giver. That is God our Father looked at the state that he, mankind was in, sinful mankind, said there's only one way. And this is how I'm going to express it. I'm going to send my son Jesus as a gift to the world. The Apostle Paul, he describes it this way in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. He says, thanks be to God or 2 Corinthians 9, for his inexpressible gift. Can you just imagine Paul like just trying to grasp with the words? Like, it's like you can't even describe it. I mean, have you ever received a gift from somebody and you kind of stand back and you're like, how do I even describe what this means? How, how, do, I, how do I find the words even to tell you what it means to me? And Paul says, this, is a, this gift is inexpressible. I can't even, I don't even have the words. In fact, in one version of the Bible, it uses this word. It's really interesting. It says it's unspeakable. I can't even talk about it. There have been times in my life, and if you're a follower of Jesus, I'm, I'm pretty certain you have experienced this as well, that there have been those moments and those times when you've just stepped back and you go like, I can't even talk about it. Because you get so overwhelmed with the gift of salvation, God the Father. You can't even express it. It really doesn't matter what age you were. Some were younger and, and some were older. Some received Jesus later in life. But to try to describe this gift, you just can't do it. It's unspeakable. I'd like for you just to pause for just a moment. And just think about this question, why me? Why me? I think when I do, I, I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> when I go, why me? 
Why, why God, did you give me this gift? I, I don't have an answer. Outside of what the Bible says. Why me? Why you? Why us? Because it's the depth of his love, and we can't even describe it. I know and that it's easy for all of us to kind of go through this season, through this weird time of COVID, and get all wrapped up in a lot of other things. But I just like to call us to just a few moments of just pausing, whether that's today or maybe it's in your home or maybe, maybe it's when you gather as a family and whatever you do for Christmas, I don't know, and just pause and consider this unspeakable, inexpressible, this gift that we can't describe, and just pause and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. There's something that we get to do, though, as followers of Jesus, and it really comes off of that list, that list of gift givers. When it comes to this gift that we have received, guess what we get to be? We get to be re-gifters. That's what we get to be. And I'm just inviting you to re-gift this gift. How? By telling others by sharing the good news of the gospel, what Jesus has done for you. We're re-gifters, and you know something? That's not just okay, that's amazing. I'm going to pray, and in the moments of prayer, I just want to invite us, if you're a follower of Jesus, to just stop and pause and say thank you. I, I don't think I do that enough. I, I think we probably, none of us do that enough. And if you've never, if you've never, um, receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I just want to lead you in that. I just don't want to miss the opportunity for you to miss out on this gift that God has given to the world. He just says this, if you just trust in me, if you just believe in me, um, I'll make you a brand new person and I'll give you a brand new life and I'll give you a brand new hope. And there's so many of us that have received it and know exactly what it feels like to receive this gift. I've said it before, and I say it again, it's like there's no magic words. So it's not like you have to have the words lined up just right. It's just in your heart believing that he's Lord, saying, Jesus, I trust in you. And then in a moment, we're going to gather around the communion table. I'm going to invite you to do that if you're a follower of Jesus. But first, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to just invite us just to say thank you. And then I'll lead you in a prayer if you've never trusted him. Jesus, I thank you for the moments today that we have just to gather and, and just to pause and to give thanks for this gift that you have given. I just don't think there is any one of us. There's no human alive. I don't think they can describe it adequately, what you have done and the gift that you have given. And I just invite you, if you've never trusted Jesus, you've never received this gift, to just pray with me and make these words your words from your heart. Jesus, I trust in you. I believe in you. I receive this gift that you have given your son, Jesus, and ask you to Forgive me, I confess my need for you. I make you Lord and Savior today. If you prayed words like that, you lifted them from your heart, then you become a brand new person and you become a recipient of the greatest gift ever known to man. And that's eternity with Jesus. And that's an eternal hope that can only be found in him.